Good morning, dear children. How are you? May your mornings be fun-filled and bright. May you blossom like a flower and shine like a sun. So, shall we begin now? I have a small task for you. Just look around yourselves and see the things where you can store something. Okay, I'll give you some hints. You store your fruits and vegetables to keep hair fresh. Got it? Okay, just jot it down. Next, you keep your clothes inside it. I think everybody has thought about it. Your stationery items are kept here. Write it fast. Okay, come on. Next, to keep your books in it. Next coming up, you carry it to school. Your father uses it to keep money in his pocket. Okay, have you all written? Just type a few of them in a message box. Let me see whether you are able to guess or not. Did you enjoy doing it? So, after doing this activity, we came to know that to store some things, we use different storage units like cupboard, bookshelf, refrigerator, school bag, etc. Similarly, computer uses different storage devices, which are also known as secondary storage devices or peripherals. So, first of all, we will see what we are going to learn in this chapter. Data, information, computer memory and memory size, types of memory, storage devices and computer port. Now, we will discuss about data and information. The set of characters like alphabets, digits or special characters that represents facts or figures is known as data. And when the data is processed by the processing unit, that is CPU, it is known as information. Let's discuss one example. Your father bought a cloth from the market and gave it to the tailor to stitch a shirt pant out of it. Here, cloth can be considered as data and shirt pant can be considered as information. The cloth in its raw form is not useful until it gets converted into some dress. Now, we will discuss about data storage units. Children, you know one thing. A computer does not understand any of your language, neither Hindi nor English or any other language. It does not understand. So, it stores all its information in zeros and ones. And that's called binary digit or it's simply called bits. Each letter or number or symbol has its own unique binary code that is very difficult to understand for you. But thankfully, we have some components in computer to interpret our language to the computer binary digits. You will come to know about this more in a higher classes. Now, Let's know about different memory sizes as we have different imaging units for different things. We have some units in computer also to measure the memory. A smallest memory unit is bit. 8 bits make up to 1 byte that is occupied by one character. But as you go for higher memory spaces, the unit changes like 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobyte is equal to 1 megabyte. 1024 megabyte is equal to 1 gigabyte. 1024 gigabyte is equal to 1 terabyte. 1024 terabyte is equal to 1 petabyte. 1024 petabyte is equal to 1 exabyte. 1024 exabyte is equal to 1 zettabyte. And 1024 zettabyte is equal to 1 yottabyte. Our next topic is computer memory. Computer memory is just like a human brain. As a human brain is capable of storing things permanently and temporarily, similarly, computer 
can also make use of both temporary and permanent memory. See children, we can understand it in this manner. There are some things which you remember since your childhood. But there are some things which you did not forget easily. So, the things which you remember since your childhood, they retain in the permanent memory of your brain. And the things which you forget, but they are in your brain, temporary memory of the brain. Now, we will talk about types of memory. A computer has two types of memory. Number one, primary memory. And number two, secondary memory. If we talk about primary memory, is also called internal or main memory. It is of two types, RAM and ROM. Whereas, secondary memory is also known as external memory that stores any information or data permanently. It has also so many types like hard disk, CD, DVD, Blu-ray disk, pen drive and memory card. Let's know about these devices individually. There are only two primary memory. First, RAM. So, RAM stands for random access memory. It is a temporary memory and it stores the input, instructions and output, but loses all the information when the computer is turned off. Now, what does it mean? Let me give you an example. Suppose you are working in MS Paint and drawing something. Suddenly, your laptop turns off because of low battery and you have not saved your drawing. After charging your laptop, when you restart your computer and paint program, you find that your drawing is not there. It means your drawing was being saved temporarily in RAM, but as the laptop got turned off, the RAM cleaned all its memory. This is what RAM does. It saved your data temporarily and that's why nowadays we ask for the phones or laptops with higher RAM or memory so that it can run the applications smoothly and do the multitasking. Now, next is ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory. It is a permanent memory, but the information once saved cannot be changed. For example, can you change the process of shutting down the computer? No. Why? Because these instructions are saved in ROM. All instruction that is required for the booting of the computer are stored in ROM only. It means the predefined or default commands. Now we will talk about the secondary devices. Secondary devices store the information permanently. So, when you save your data using the save option, it gets saved in some secondary device. So, our first device is a hard disk drive. In short, we simply call it hard disk or HDD. Hard disk is fixed inside the CPU box. So, while working in a program, CPU uses RAM for processing. And when we save the file, it is copied from RAM to the hard disk. Or we can save it on any other secondary device. And the storage capacity is 1 terabyte to 16 terabytes. Our next secondary storage device is pen drive. This is small portable storage device that can store your data permanently. It is so small that it can be carried in a pocket and the storage capacity of pen drive is up to 1 terabyte. Next we have CD, DVD and BD. Let me explain this by differentiating all three. CD stands for compact disc, DVD stands for digital versatile disc and BD stands for Blu-ray disc. All the three discs store data permanently. All these are portable so that you can carry your data easily. But their storage capacity differs. A CD can store data up to 700 MB 
fair as DVD can store data of 4.7 to 17 GB. Blu-ray disc comes in two types, one single site, which has a storage capacity of 25 GB, whereas double-sided disc store data up to 50 GB. Next, memory card. Memory card is also a portable storage device. It is also called a smart card or simply called data card as well. Normally, it is used for the devices like cameras, MP3 players, mobile phones, etc. A memory card is available with the memory storage capacity up to 1 terabyte. Now, we will discuss the last topic that is computer ports. A computer port is a connection point or an interface between a computer and an internal or external devices. Internal port can connect devices like hard drive and CD-ROM or DVD drive, where as external ports connect external devices like modem, printer, mouse and other devices.